I'm joined now by Saurabh Gupta. He's a senior Asia-Pacific international relations policy specialist at the Institute for China-American Studies at Think Tank here in Washington, D.C. So, Saurabh, what does this new railway mean in terms of access, opening up the region, tourism, and economic opportunities? Oh, it's, it, is, it is about opportunity. It's, 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 it's a tremendous occasion. Uh, you know, let's, thinking uh, in terms of, uh, let me bring in the story of Europe out here and the story of the Orient Express, which goes all the way from Istanbul and could go all the way through the Channel Tunnel to London if need be. That is the way Asia, uh, China and Southeast Asia are being connected. This is one leg of that connection, which will integrate all the people together and create immense prosperity in, in a variety of fields, as we talked about, from tourism to commerce to 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 just just mere connectivity and and and, and business. Uh, so I think it's a it's 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 a tremendous development, and I think and I'm looking forward to this to the the Kunming Singapore line being developed in further greater great, greater detail. This was a massive, massive project, uh, more than a thousand kilometers, billions of dollars, and took just about five years. So when you look at this example of infrastructure cooperation between China and this Southeast Asian country, what is the goal here, especially when you look at this uh, region, specifically this region of China, Yunnan, uh, and Laos? Uh, I think it is to integrate the, the, the neighborhood uh, it's not just China, the neighborhood being integrated in, with China, it's China integrating itself into that neighborhood. And as China rises and as the region rises economically, uh, there will be prosperity all around. Uh, Laos has been a little bit of a backwater simply because it has been a landlocked nation. And we know through the study in the area of development that landlocked nations just have that much greater uh, barriers to growth. And this is about tearing down those barriers and giving opportunity for all so that the Asia in 2050 will be, can, will, can be peaceful, prosperous, and stable. Laos is an ASEAN country, as we know, and uh, we also have the Belt and Road Initiative. This particular project, as we mentioned, took five years. What else is happening out there? I know the pandemic uh, may have slowed some projects down, but what else is out there in terms of ASEAN BRI cooperation? You know, the fundamental of ASEAN BRI co cooperation is about north-south cooperation, building connectivity north-south. There are other countries which are also involved, you know, the, the Japans and the Indians who are trying to build east-west uh, connectivity. Now, north-south and east-west are not competing against each other. It is just uh, accentuating the possibilities of economic growth in that neighborhood because these are not zero-sum games, these are positive-sum games. And from that perspective, I think this is, this is, this is tremendous. Uh, of course, in this day and age with COVID-19, things are a little slow, moving slowly, of course, so that the virus doesn't spread, but also from an economic perspective so that debt burdens can be managed. But what I would say in that regard are, is that you know, in colonial times, the French were in Laos. What infrastructure did they create? Uh, one of the problems that the folks have had in creating this railway connection is unexploded ordnance from the Vietnam War. So we can see, I mean, other parties brought in war and division, and here is a chance for China and their neighborhood to bring prosperity and peace to itself. Oh, great to hear your take. Saurabh Gupta, thank you so much for joining us this evening. You're most welcome.